Okay guys, <laughs> so yesterday's video was a complete disaster. I had nothing but a flood of seriously negative comments which just baffled me. Yesterday I had a huge script written up pretty much land blasting my viewers for ignoring parts of my video as nearly a third seemed to ignore things I had distinctly expressed. However, I have a policy to sleep on it when I have a problem like this. So last night I realized what the problem was. I failed to reiterate several times, I just mentioned it once, the completely voluntary nature of the idea in my video on psychopaths and sociopaths. I mentioned it once in terms of treatment, not like it did any good, people still freaked out about the concept of forced treatment. Also, throwing in the legal precedent of schizophrenics, it's easier now to understand why people completely ignored several points I made about voluntary systems. It really does take an idea that's pretty close to modern disability laws to Orwellian oppression. I know I'll blame a lot of things on stress, however this time it's a good blame. This is the first time in three years I haven't had a truckload of stress in my life, and it's taking time for both of us to adjust. We now, starting last week, have full-time, stable, long-term jobs, which we are still adjusting to the concept of. Stress at a moderate level can help you focus. We went from extremely high stress to extremely low stress, and we're trying to figure out how to deal with it. Without the stress, uh, which acted like high caffeine on a daily basis, dropping to very low stress, I've been finding my attention to detail is now horrible, and I've been forgetting little details that turn out to be very, very important, like in this video, so I apologize. However, the vagueness of this video was an interesting Rorschach test for viewers. In my last video, people seemed to completely ignore things I said, and many thought first with their emotions, or used old frames of thinking, ignoring the science of the matter entirely. Mental shortcuts are our way of dealing with most of the world, but when new ways of thinking are presented, being able to stop and avoid using these jumps and decide what is being presented is actually what is being said seems to be a bit difficult. The number one worry people had is that people will be overdiagnosed. I address this very, very clearly, but people seem to ignore it as we can't at this point properly diagnose the issue. And it won't be an issue for at least 10 years as neurology becomes more precise and much more inexpensive. So, yes, you're right. We could overdiagnose it, especially now. But uh, in the future, probably not. Maybe not. We don't know yet. To let you guys know why I even bothered making this video, it's because I'm considering writing a fiction book, and I've already got a few chapters here and there written up roughly, uh, set 50 years in the future, and I wanted to see if there may be issues with some of my predictions in one of the chapters. And if discussing it would cause more harm than good, I wanted people to go, hmm, that's an interesting idea, let's discuss it and see if there's some problems. Instead, this happened. First, I had people who agreed with me who had heard things by Robert Hare about his idea of psychopathy. Even if one person who fostered, though I don't think they believe it, that they wished that we could take all the psychopaths and send them to an island. That is the kind of thinking I wanted to avoid in this discussion because that creates prejudice and resentment. It also makes me wonder and a little worry about how people who watched my video and agreed with it if they didn't realize the voluntariness of the video. I couldn't grasp why people are so freaked out about preventing people with disabilities detrimental to a job was so appalling. You don't want Parkinson's patients working with class 4 biological hazards or colorblind people working in bomb disposal or electricity. And Asperger's definitely shouldn't work in PR. Obviously not. Oh my god, Hitler! You want to send them all off to the gulag, apparently. Did I or did I not say that treatment was completely voluntary? Most of the comments I did address in the video, they just weren't paying attention, blinded by the Orwellianness presented accidentally. The purpose of this video is not to piss people off, which is why I was so careful to discuss the details that many just seemed to ignore before posting on it, but pretty understandable with the vagueness used. The only person who dissented with any actual substance was a skeptical heretic who pointed out that A, my sources were very slim, and B, how do you define psychopathy as a disability? I responded because what makes humanity work is our empathy. In a completely objective way, no, there's nothing keeping people with psychopathy and sociopathy from succeeding. Many are just surviving like the rest of us, however many are in power as well disabling humanity. 
The more empathy that exists in a population, the more trust exists and the higher the exchanges in trade and healthier the population is. I cited Paul Zak and John Coates, who are neurologists who espouse these views and report this data. He disputed the validity using Zach and Coates because neither of them were solely focused on neurology. It was sort of a side view on them, uh, of their research, which may be true, but meta-studies can be very valid research. What he pointed out, though, is how small the research has been done on this area, and while data we have seems to suggest a trend, there's not enough data to say anything with certainty. When more empirical data is studied as time progresses, the black and whiteness of the data from this minority of researchers may not appear so clear. I also do not have the evidence needed to discuss the impacts of psychopaths in power and how heavy they exist in the ranks, as the diagnose is, is still subjective at this point, so we don't know what numbers are in power. Lacking empathy may be ideal for some positions of power, in fact, and perhaps I was painting the field with too broad a brush. I happen to also have personal experience with the sociopath I happen to work under, who was diagnosed and had been part of a health insurance company that was taken down for a massive fraud. He had zero remorse for it, just that he got caught, and he asked me point blank to use my scientific background and title to sell an herbal supplement scam. I was very shocked, and Robert Hare's research validated and expanded my own concerns. Let's just say that my judgment on the issue may also be emotionally compromised. As it turns out, I will think twice before putting this into the chapter of my book. Depending on the research to this video, I'll determine if people think they can handle such a complex issue without knee-jerk reactions to either extreme yet. The section involves a completely voluntary mirror neuron implant by a serial murderer who is a sociopath that he volunteered for to avoid a life sentence. If you have specific questions about what I meant on sections, please ask me without freaking out. If you think I'm saying something that sounds very out of place for me, please let me know. As people freaking out on me didn't do me a bit of good. It just made me really confused. So if you need more clarification, please let me know. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. Let me know what you think I should do with the uh, shit-tastic video I made. Should I redo it this time? making sure that people understand it's voluntary. Should I leave it up? I'm not sure if I should do that because people might get bad ideas from it. Um, just let me know because uh, it, it, it may be useful. It may not be useful. Just, just let me know what you think. Bye.